All right, so let's do some graphing. Um, this first one trips people up because hyperbolas are harder to graph. Um, so what we should remember is that hyperbolas usually have a vertical and horizontal asymptote that are just the y and x axes. So when it's shifted, we're really shifting the asymptotes. Uh, so it looks like we have a horizontal shift of positive 3, and we have a vertical shift of negative 1. So that means at the point 3, negative 1, that is where our asymptotes will intersect. So we can draw them in. There's our vertical one. Let's try again. There's our horizontal one. Great asymptote, Mr. Howard. Okay, so the reason these asymptotes are there is because... We can't plug in x equals 3 because that's going to give us negative 1 over 0, which would mean that we'd be dividing by 0, so we can't plug in 3, but we can plug in every value up until we hit 3 and every value after 3, but we just can't plug in 3. And then the reason that our horizontal asymptote here is negative 1 is because we're never going to quite reach negative 1. Uh, because this will never be zero because of this negative one up here. So we can plug in a billion for x, but this part still won't quite be zero, which means the whole thing will never quite be negative one. So that's why that horizontal asymptote is in there. So now, uh, one more thing we have to do before we graph this to be careful is we have to notice that there's this negative one out in front, which means it's been reflected. So normally hyperbolas look something like this if you follow my pointer. But this one, this one's actually going to look more like this. Because it's been reflected. Okay. So what we would normally do is we would go over one, up one, over one, up one for our, uh, for our hyperbola. But since it's been reflected, we are going to go over one, down one. And that gives us one point. Okay, that's the point four negative 2 and then we can also go over 1 up 1 so that is the point 2 0 uh, 2 0 okay so we have our two points on there which is all the test asks us to do just to show that the transformation has occurred and then now just to make sure we get the shape right we can remember what normally happens with hyperbolas uh, normally, if we went over one half, we'd be going up two. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over one half and down two. And if you if you're confused about why that happens, just plug in one half into one over x and see what you get. Okay, so we're going to go over one half. We're going to go down two. There's another point. And then really, it's, we just have to get maybe one more point in before we can draw this. So if we plug in 5, we get negative 1 over 2, negative 1 half. Minus 1 is negative 1 and a half. So if we come over to 5, then we should be at negative 1 and a half, which is about right there. And now we can draw our hyperbola in on this side. There it is. All right. So now we can uh, take care of the other side. If we, would, if we go over one half, then again, we should be up at two. So we'll go over one half up two, or, or sorry, over, over one half from the hyperbola though, right? Okay, so over, what I mean is we should be going over one half from here and up two, over one half up two. So we go over one half, we go up two, there's one of our points. And then at 1, we're going to be at uh, a positive 1 half minus 1, which is going to give us a negative half. So at 1, we're at a negative half. And then we can just draw in our hyperbola. All right, sweet. And that is our final graph. We have two points labeled. I just put them down here for it to be clean. And then our other points are pretty precise as well, and that's what our graph looks like. All right, so this next one is the cube root of x function, or x to the one-third. And um, we have to be careful with the starting point because it's subtraction. One sec. 
Okay, so it's 2 minus x, which means it has been shifted to the right 2, um, because what we do is we plug in the number that's going to make this 0 to find the starting point. So our starting point is going to be at 2, negative 2. Uh, but the thing is, the reason we have to be careful is because this is 2 minus x, which is also negative x plus 2, which is also negative, negative x minus 2. Okay, so really this thing has been shifted horizontally because our inputs are getting multiplied by a negative. So, and it's been stretched by a factor of 4. So what we should do is normally what we would do because it's stretched by a factor of 4 is we would go over 1 up 1 2 3 4 and we go over 1 down 1 2 3 4 but since this um, since these inputs and outputs have or since the inputs have been multiplied by a negative and this thing is flipping horizontally uh, we're going to do exa exactly the opposite of that. We're going to go over 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and our points are 3, negative 6, and then we also have uh, 1, 2. All right. So now we just have to draw our lines, which again, you can kind of draw these based on how the parent function looks. Um, normally, a cube root of x looks something like this. So since this has been shifted horizontally, uh, we know that it should actually look like this now. There it is. Okay, so they're graphed, we're done. Uh, we can move on. Hooray. You know, as I went to carry on, I realized that we're not done because it asks us to also list the domain and range. So one more thing to do. Here it is. We noticed that for this hyperbola, our domain is negative infinity, negative infinity, negative infinity, all the way up until we hit 3, and then 3 is no good, but then 3 all the way to infinity is okay. So for our domain, we say negative infinity to 3, union 3 to infinity. Or we can say, and this actually ends up being less work in this case, we say x is a real number under the condition that x is not 3. Sweet. Now for the range, we'll say, same idea, negative infinity, negative infinity, negative infinity, all the way up to negative 1, and then negative 1 all to infinity. So we can either say that the range is negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to infinity, or we can say y in this case is a real number as long as y is not negative 1. There we go. There are our domain and range for that one. Okay, moving on to this one now. This one's super easy because there's no problems. None. Try to find a problem. You can't. All right, this thing goes from negative infinity to positive infinity and positive infinity, negative infinity. Uh, this is a fully continuous function. So we say the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, or we can just say x is a real number. No restrictions this time. It's just any real number you want it to be. All right, for the range, same thing. We say negative infinity to positive infinity, or we say y is a real number, no restrictions, no worries. Okay, cool. And now we're done. Now we're ready to move on. Okay.